have with us uh, Mr. Jean Pascal Trucoyer, CEO and Chairman of uh, Schneider Electric, speaking to ET now. Sir, thank you so much for taking out the time. My first question to you is uh, you met the Prime Minister today. Uh, you know, it comes at a time, your meeting comes at a time when the government seems to be making sincere efforts in, uh, you know, towards ease of doing business to make uh, India a manufacturing hub. Uh, in your assessment, uh, has the government taken enough uh, reform measures to bring in large-scale uh, investment? Well, it has been very supportive of business mm -hmm. and very supportive of foreign investment. Uh, our case speaks uh, by itself. Uh, today, we are big in manufacturing in India. We have 28 factories in Great. India, Great. which are not only producing for India, but exporting more than 50% of what they do outside of India. Mm -hmm. So they have proven their competitiveness not only on the local market, but global on a global scale. Mm -hmm. And what is also very impressive in this morning meeting is the alignment of Schneider together with the priorities of the government. Uh, mm -hmm. Digital India is something right. that we serve for data centers, mm -hmm. for digital manufacturing, for smart grid, for smart cities, uh, for smart homes and, and buildings. Right. Access to energy for all right. has been a priority of ever for Schneider, mm -hmm. and we are deeply engaged into that in, uh, in India for absolutely uh, obvious, obvious reason. Manufacturing in India, mm -hmm. I think Schneider is uh, life proof that right. it makes tons of sense to, uh, uh, to uh, manufacture in India. Mm -hmm. And then I would say 80% of the discussion was about people. Right. Uh, skilling people mm -hmm. for the next technology revolution, not only for India, but for the world. world right. And there we are signing today uh, an agreement here to train even more people to the, the, the new aspects of, of the job of electrician. Right. Uh, so we have already trained 60,000 people and we want to train in the next coming five years 150,000 people. Wow, okay. So, so it's been a, a very intense discussion, but very aligned discussion. So I, I'll come to the bit about, uh, you know, Schneider's uh, business in India and also how you're engaged with the government on a whole host of uh, issues, uh, programs from Digital India to Make in India. I'll come to that in a bit. But, you know, just to understand from a global perspective, uh, uh, how would you rate the government? Is it doing enough to kickstart investment? Uh, so in your assessment, how would you rate the Modi government? Look, I, I believe there is a clear intention mm -hmm. uh, uh, to make India progress. Uh, for the benefit of, of the people and to really uh, uh, bring India into all the important technologies, sectors and business of, of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, as every country, India has its own issues to, uh, to resolve. But what we have seen of the government has been a, a clear uh, uh, encouragement for us to keep investing in India. What about ease of doing business? Uh, uh, the government has made some uh, progress in that, but is that enough? Do you think? I I'm talking because, you know, you speak from a global perspective. You have countries competing with each other to attract, uh, uh, you know, big ticket uh, dollar inflows, so to say. So in your assessment, is the government doing enough to attract those big ticket investments from an ease of doing business perspective? My impression is that the government is clearly committed to it, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we are working with, uh, with, with them mm -hmm. uh, to keep progressing together. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, and, and I would say at the end of the day, uh, the proof is in the pudding. The fact that at Schneider, mm -hmm. we, India has been the country where we have invested the most in the past 15 years mm -hmm. proves that we are commit that we are convinced that the country is going into the right direction fair enough I, that's that's a fair point uh, you know if we were to talk about the infra story uh, a lot of progress has been made uh, the government is making all efforts to ensure the previous uh, uh, bottlenecks and big 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 uh, issues are addressed but a lot of, lot of the investment continues to be public driven it's not private investments, so to say, or private sector-driven investments. In your assessment, how far away are we towards, uh, you know, private sector breaking ground, so to say, as far as infra is concerned? Well, I'm not sure if I'm completely qualified to, uh, to answer that question, but we work here with uh, public mm -hmm. entities and we work with a lot of private entities. Right. And we see a lot of partnerships between those two happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when public, uh, public companies are... are uh, 
taking the responsibility of the job. They have multiple collaboration with companies like ours who are private companies right. uh, uh, to design together, to commission together, uh, and to improve mm -hmm. uh, things together. I believe in collaboration. Mm -hmm. I believe in cooperation. I believe that uh, for companies it's important uh, to work closely with uh, with, uh, with, with the state, mm -hmm. uh, so that the environment of business is, uh, is positive and improved. Uh, we as company can bring the ideas about the, the latest technologies, mm -hmm. we can bring innovation. Uh, they have a lot of complexities that they have to deal with, so that dialogue is, uh, is very important. So we work intensely, we are a technology provider at Schneider. Right. We are not doing by ourselves. So we work with thousands of partners mm -hmm. every day to assemble our technology in solutions that make sense right. to people. Right. And so we work with, with, with many private companies and with, uh, together with many public companies. Yes. And we believe really intensely in collaboration. In your assessment, what would be the three growth drivers for Schneider in India? Well, very simply, uh, energy, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, well, the growth of India needs a lot of energy, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that India, which was a big news for the world, mm -hmm. on the 2nd of October has signed, like the other very large countries, yeah. mm, the, uh, the COP21 yeah. Paris Agreement, means that energy has to be consumed in a different manner, mm -hmm. in a manner which is much more efficient, which is... Uh, um, Solar is, is, is a huge... Yeah, yeah, you speak about generation, but the yeah. first, mm. the cheapest, mm. the simplest, the safest and the greenest way to produce energy is to save energy. Of course, yeah. And, and <laughs> yes. Of course, but not many people mention it. Right, yes. And, and uh, it's not us saying, these are international bodies, uh, buildings are today 80% inefficient, mm -hmm. and factories are today 60% inefficient. That mm -hmm. creates pollution, uh, that creates uh, uh, unclean air. Uh, if don't even, not even speaking about carbon emission, uh, that makes the cities difficult to live in. The first point is to tackle this and make sure that we put technology to, uh, to the service of, uh, of that. Mm -hmm. So the first point will be about energy. Mm -hmm. So saving more on when we produce, doing a large part of it was renewable. Uh, right. and, and we've been uh, working a lot at Schneider in renewable energies from India. Uh, okay. So our global center for inverters in energy is in India uh, for okay. homes. Okay. Um, our latest generation of solar inverter for large-scale large scale, solar farm mm -hmm. uh, will be produced in India mm -hmm. for the world. So we have a huge investment here on, in energy. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, will be about digital India. Mm -hmm. um, so Schneider is leader in providing energy infrastructure for data centers. Mm -hmm. IT is a refer uh, India is a reference country for IT. So we want to work together on more efficient, um, uh, more performing mm -hmm. uh, data centers. But digital is not only for IT. Right. Now everything will be connected. Yeah. Your home will be connected. Yeah. Your uh, office will be connected. Your manufacturing will be connected to your mobile, to analytics, to software in, uh, in the cloud. And we mm. see a lot of potential here in India because India is a perfect convergence mm -hmm. of large cities, large industry together with IT, uh, IT industry. Right. And, and the third point is mm. industry, mm. industrialization. As I said, Schneider has proven that industry can be very competitive in India, and there's going to be a lot of investment uh, uh, there. So, uh, energy, digi digital, the, and, and industrialization. Industry. Mm. And and in your assessment, what could be if you know when we were to talk about? Uh, yes, India is a very important geography for Schneider. You've talked about the fact that you know there's so much of investment that has gone in. The sheer number of people that work here is very significant. Help us understand in terms of some uh, uh, investment numbers that you can give us. That you know in the next maybe uh, a couple of years, what could be the kind of investments uh, that would go uh, in your India unit? Yeah, well, the investment that we're going to do here will be always um, directed to R&D. Mm -hmm. So keeping on uh, beefing up our R&D here. Uh, our manufacturing, of course, on all our service capabilities on, on, uh, on the territory. 
as I was saying before, India has been one of the places, the place in the world where we have invested the most mm -hmm. in, in the past, I would say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we plan again to be uh, investing more than 100 million euros in, uh, in the next coming five years. Mm -hmm. uh, but frankly, we are very pragmatic people. I mean, uh, we make the future every day. Uh, so if we see more opportunities, we're going to invest more. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's going to be the case. And uh, would you be looking at inorganic expansion as well? If yes, then which are the areas that you would zero in for M&A opportunities? Well, we, I, I, I'd rather go for partnerships. Uh, mm -hmm. We believe a lot in the power of partnerships, mm -hmm. the capability for several companies to work together to provide a full uh, value to our customers. And we see a lot of potential here with Indian companies either on for the local market mm -hmm. or on a global scale okay okay and and are you already in talks with some companies for partnerships well we have everyday discussions for partnerships again we have plenty of indian companies that we work with mm -hmm. on a daily basis right mentioned specifically that Digital India, Skill India, Make in India, some of the programs that you are engaged with in the government at a very significant level. Let's take them one by one. First up, Digital India. You did talk about that, you know, that's going to be a priority area in terms of a growth engine for India. Help us understand, uh, you know, what would be the key things that you would do uh, as far as uh, Digital India is concerned. So let's speak about things that we do, mm -hmm. for instance, smart cities. Mm. Uh, yes, so of course, we yeah. take, uh, there are some cities in India mm. that we have uh, uh, that we are uh, supplying with software mm. uh, to organize their traffic, their security, mm. always the electrical grid. Right. Uh, we have yeah. one of the uh, best mm. recognized software in the world for the electrical grid. Mm. Green building, uh, smart mm. building, uh, smart homes mm. uh, go, to go together. Data centers, we spoke yeah, about it, yeah. uh, reference in, uh, in India, on manufacturing of the future. Mm. Uh, and all of this is, is supported at Schneider by a unique architecture mm. of connected products, smart mm. products, which are connected into analytics on, yeah. on software to optimize uh, the work of installations. Yes, you do a lot of work in smart cities. Uh, which are the cities that you are actively, uh, you know, working with uh, as far as state governments are concerned? And my other question is, how tough is it to actually work with state governments? Because smart cities, it's, it's, it's a union government's uh, project, but execution is by state governments. And that is where uh, the huge difference lies. Well, we have several projects at the moment, and we have already uh, uh, several systems in, uh, in operation. We reviewed this morning the the case of the city of Puri, mm -hmm. where uh, we, we worked on, uh, on the traffic, on the security coupled uh, with, uh, with energy. Mm -hmm. Each city, cities are very complex, mm, yeah, okay? yeah. Uh, because needs of the city never come as integrated. Mm. They come step by step and yes. pieces by pieces. Sometimes it's going to be the water network yeah. that needs to be tackled. Sometimes the electrical grid, sometimes the traffic, sometimes it's going to be a security uh, issue. And one has to recognize that being the mayor of a city is one of the most difficult jobs in, yeah. in the world because we all have an opinion, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what we supply is that yes. we make sure that the pieces of technology and solutions are engineered with local partners and they, they can come piece by piece at, at the same time as they come as a need for the city, mm. but then as they add to each other, they can integrate mm. at the global level. Right. So it's very, uh, we are the service of cities. Mm. Uh, it comes according to their needs, starting by their priorities. But what we supply is modular enough mm -hmm. that uh, it builds gradually and it is integrated step by step. And uh, which are the cities that, or uh, what are the projects that you're doing uh, right now with various cities? You mentioned Puri. Which are the other ones uh, that you are uh, working yeah, on? I, and uh, yeah, several of the projects. I don't want to enter into the detail here. Okay. You're going to do that with my Indian teams. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But how soon will those fructify? Let's talk that. How soon can, can well, they it, become it can sizable? Technologies are available. Okay, okay, technologies yeah. are available. Uh, it starts first, a uh, city by large is, is constituted of buildings. Mm -hmm. So making your buildings efficient and green is probably the first priority. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got um, several key facilities or functions in cities 
that have to be smarter than they used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, speak about electricity, speak about water. On there again, technologies are available. On the good news that they come, they can come one by one. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, you have to take everything in one uh, in one go. Right. So the time of execution of this can be quite fast mm -hmm. uh, once the need has been has been uh, has been confirmed. And what about solar? Again, that's an area of priority for you in India. And again, uh, in that business area, how are you looking to scale up? Uh, any details that you can share with us? Uh, solar is a uh, is a big specialty of Schneider in mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. um, because well, it's becoming more and more distributed and closer to the point of utilization. Mm. So it saves a lot of infrastructure. All right. And the other element is that the cost of solar has been uh, has been decreasing, decreasing drastically yeah. in the past yeah. uh, five years, mm. almost divided in some places by uh, by a factor of five. Mm. Uh, and, and it comes now coupled to storage uh, mm. solutions. So the combination of the two makes a very powerful uh, source of energy, which which Actually, if you consider the all integrated cost, comes at a very affordable uh, price, mm -hmm. on, on the, which is much faster to deploy than other sources. Right. So today we've, we've done a lot in India. I, I think we connect 25% of the solar installations today mm. in, uh, in India, and we are committed to do more. Um, again, a lot of the technology we do in that space is produced outside of India, which makes it on the top of it very competitive. Mm. Where do you see Schneider India two years from now in terms of uh, scale, in terms of opportunity, uh, you know, in terms of uh, targets? Where do you see it two years from now? Well, it depends on uh, the teams of Schneider in India. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe in people. Mm -hmm. I believe that the company is... Uh, is, 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 is the creativity, the innovation of a company is uh, the creativity and the innovation of, uh, of its people. And our organization in India is complete. Mm -hmm. It has its own R&D, its own manufacturing, a huge coverage of the territory at every level from specification uh, to service. Uh, we have proven, mm -hmm. uh, it's not words, uh, look at our records that Schneider is very committed to the development of, of the country. Uh, our development in the past 10 years has been very, uh, very fast. Uh, so we see uh, uh, Schneider India in the future certainly bigger because the country will be one of the uh, major poles of growth in the world. And its impact on our global organization will be uh, even higher uh, because... What is the target that you have in terms of exports uh, you know, people you mentioned, but in terms of export contribution, where do you see it? Much more. That's all. The, <laughs> the only way there, there is no limit, right? Uh, today we export more than 50% yeah. of what we produce here. Mm -hmm. uh, we leverage on a global scale uh, the innovation which is developed mm -hmm. in our labs. So I see a lot of potential in the future of our teams in India. Let me just take a you know last couple of questions on uh, Make in India. That's that's a huge program for the government, very focused as far as manufacturing is concerned. In your assessment, uh, how far away are we, f you know, before Make in India actually materializes into India becoming a manufacturing hub? For us, it has happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, just <laughs> if you want to make it happen, you can make it happen, mm -hmm. right? It's about skilling people. Right. It's about using technology, mm -hmm. which Schneider provides. Mm -hmm. In this case, we are uh, using our software, our automation, on, uh, on our energy technology. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, India is very competitive. Right. Uh, and because on the top of it, it benefits from its local and domestic scale. Right. So when you produce in India, you already have a domestic market, which uh, uh, make Caters, it possible yeah. to, to get the volumes mm -hmm. to make you very competitive. In fact, uh, Schneider is one of uh, one of the companies that have really started producing in India. But uh, you know, if one were to talk again from a global perspective, uh, uh, in your assessment, one or two bottlenecks that you think the government must address, that you think uh, ought to be addressed by the government. I think the government is addressing them. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, India was not the simplest of the countries in terms of. Uh, uh, doing business or, and, or, and or things, producing, but this yeah. is being addressed. Okay, and uh, so, so nothing that you would like to point out in terms of uh, you know. Oh, let's keep let's keep going into that direction. Okay, and lastly, how how big uh, and how game changing will GST be uh, when it comes into effect next year it's from a manufacturing it's, it's point of view? It's important. It's going to be big. 
okay. uh, when it happens. I mean, every simplification will be creating jobs mm -hmm. and will be opening opportunities. Okay. It will be making India more competitive and everybody wants India to be more competitive. So my last question to you, sir, as we wrap this up is that uh, you talked about at length as far as manufacturing is concerned. You did point out that India is also, of course, making a lot of efforts in terms of ease of doing business. In your assessment, uh, the seven, seven and a half percent growth that we are looking at, is it achievable? Is this something that's doable from India's point of view? Yeah, I'm not a macroeconomist, but I would believe so, mm -hmm. because the main uh, engine of, uh, or the main support to growth is population. Mm -hmm. And India has a tremendous uh, population, young population, uh, full of ambition, developing its own business, and, and that's probably uh, the biggest capital of India. Mm -hmm. The highest asset, or the biggest asset of India, is, uh, is the use, the quality, and the ambition of its people. And, uh, and India belongs to a very close club of uh, countries of more than one billion people. Right. So <laughs> it's a great chance for growth. Right. And so lastly, as we wrap things up here, uh, we've talked at length about manufacturing. We are probably in India seeing uh, uh, an interest rate cycle, which is probably at the lowest in several years now. Uh, interest rates, of course, uh, lower rates definitely do go a lo long way as far as manufacturing is concerned. In your assessment, that could be a huge driver? Yeah, the world is going with low interest rates mm -hmm. at the moment, which is normally a good uh, incentive to uh, to investment, mm -hmm. uh, right? So let's take that as one of the tailwinds of the economy at the moment. We face so many headwinds mm -hmm. in the in the recent ten years that it's good to have some uh, some tailwinds. tailwinds. And when you look at the tailwinds, we spoke about the dynamism of industry, the clear direction which has been set, uh, lower interest rates, right? Uh, currency which is competitive so we just have to work together so we wrap this up right here thank you so much for speaking to us thanks a lot thank you find us on facebook at facebook.com slash et now and don't forget to click the like button you can also follow us on twitter at ET Now Live. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash ET Now.